Welcome into his brain. Welcome into his frequency. Enter at your own risk. Come be at peace with me. Ask the call where we rise and don't fall. Welcome back to another episode of Baxter's Buzz. I am your host, Baxter E. Hall. Welcome to my brain. Welcome to my frequency. Enter at your own risk. Now, today I have a returning guest. Um, she is the global leader of learning and development at TrustWave. She is a good friend of mine, one of my mentors, and just an all-around awesome person. Jennifer Sutherland, welcome back to Baxter's Buzz. Happy to be here. Yeah, yeah. Um, so we were we talked about the book. I, I told you, I know it kind of came out of left field when I told you I was writing it. Um, yep. So, you know, that'll be another conversation. But um, one of the reasons I wanted to have you on was to talk about um, uh, chapter five in the book, uh, communication. Communication is not how well we are able to use words. So. Um, I, I was thinking about the great communicators that I that I know, and you're literally at the top of that list. You have a way of delivering uh, information in a way that's transparent. Your tone is, you know, typically good, but you don't bounce around. You don't you don't dance around difficult conversations yeah. right and so for a long time I thought that if you could just speak well that you that you were a good communicator and it's completely two different things right I mean it may, it may help right but you have to understand your audience and you have to be prepared to sort of have these sort of difficult conversations so like um how did you learn that skill have you always had it? is it something that you kind of when did you did you ever have an aha moment like okay I'm 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 talking good, but I'm not sure if if my message is getting across the way I wanted to. Like, did you ever have a moment like that in, in your life or career? Absolutely. I mean, to me, you're exactly right. Like that communicating is not just the message, but how the message is packaged and making sure it's being received. So if I think, oh, well, yeah, I understand this message and I I am packaging it and I'm saying it really well, but that person's not receiving it the whole thing doesn't work. Like it has to be the two parts. It's an A and a B. And I think growing up with a dad that was a judge really had a big impact on me. Um, obviously words were very important in our family, um, a strong vocabulary. I used to read all the time, all the time to the point where I did not necessarily know how to um, enunciate and pronounce words. Because, because you just I were so them. used to reading them. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And I will remember one time, this is a little side note. I was in a sales environment. I was in, in, when I was um, in sales and I was at like a big dinner with some potential clients. I mean, like talking like 12 or 14 people is like our high level of regional VPs and stuff. And I was out of, out of state visiting and I was at this meeting and I said a word and I'm trying to remember what it was. I think it was like, I think it was disheveled. And I said it wrong. I know exactly what the word means. And I remember somebody called me out on it, but in a really snarky, mean way. Mm -hmm. And it broke me down because I was like, I'm smart. Like, how dare you make me feel that way? And so now I'm very cautious. And I, I told my friends this in high school. I, I say things in my head, but I don't always translate that into how, what I'm actually saying. Because there's so many of those big words still in my head that yeah. I don't always say because one, I don't want to intimidate somebody and make somebody think I'm just using these like, you know, super big words just to say stuff. But I also don't want to say I'm wrong and that one moment is still in my head. But Interesting. That whole communication thing, yes. There's, um, but with my dad being a judge, he is very, very different than me. He, um, I know I've told you a bazillion stories about him. He is very much a cut and dry, give me evidence, here's the facts, none of that emotional BS. And, you know, from here to there, that's it, just that. And that's not how I think. I'm not a necessarily a fact-based person. I'm a very emotional gut person. And so I had to learn how to communicate to him anything that was important because he, he wouldn't hear what I was saying. Even though we could, would be at the same result, he wouldn't hear me. He wasn't getting the message. And so I had to start adapting how I was communicating with him. And now I think I've just continued to do that in my life, um, my personal life with Ben. He um, had a traumatic brain injury. So his brain just is a little different. 
so there's things that I have to adapt to other people that I think has just benefited me along the way. I, I think about um, the the blessing that that was to really force you to sort of communicate in a way. You know, we talk we talk about you know from a sales standpoint, there's these different sort of uh, communication styles, right? And not just sales, but just communication in general. And you need to figure out what type of person you're talking to in order to sort of con- convey that message. And um, if you can make it plain. So so Zara, um, I'm like, every time I see something that is not, I, there are things that I'm super proud of her about. I don't typically give myself credit for those things, but the things that are a little cringeworthy, I'm like, dang, that's me. You know, so see myself uh, in that. <laughs> I know, like, so she will try to tell a story inside of a story, and and it's not always very clear. And I'm like, oh, this is me. And I'm like, I think I've gotten better. I hope I'm not nine year old backs their bad, but I definitely know, like, sometimes. I'm not really getting, you know, cutting to, to the, the chase. Yep. Yeah. Um, and, and so I sort of, I know I've gotten better as far as leading with like, if it's bad news, let's lead, let's get it yep. out. I think um, the book, uh, uh, Crucial Conversations was, was really key for me as far as just recognizing sort of how someone else may be receiving the the information that I'm providing, you know, and like, yeah. and are we are we off the path or are we really still trying to get to like the same result? Exactly. Crucial Conversations is so fantastic. Huge recommendation. We've been talking about maybe adding that. We're starting a leadership book club at work. And I was thinking about throwing that in the mix because I don't really necessarily have the time to prioritize an entire training around it. But if people can go and read it on their own, then we can come back and have a conversation because it's yeah. that the communication is about the receiver not about the sender, it's about the receiver. And mm-hmm. that whole idea, and I think people just, with good intentions, the whole idea of like, you know, a sandwich way of telling people like negative feedback, that's just, it's manipulative in my opinion, right? Like you can still tell people positive feedback, but if your intention of that conversation is they need to fix X, Y, and Z, or they need to improve this part of their performance, or, you know, they're on the cusp of losing their job because of these issues, whatever the case is, You don't give them warm fuzzies first because that's like, you know, a one, two punch. It's very confusing to somebody. Mm -hmm. And so when you can sort of take somebody from the beginning and just go right there, and then you can say all these other great things, but it's, you, you want to be clear and direct as much as possible, but you also want to be honest and have good intentions that comes across. Um, I've had to fire people in my life and it's a horrible thing to have to do, but when your intentions are good they know that, you know, it's not like I'm being a jerk and I don't like you. It's that this job is not a good fit for you. And here's why. And then six months later, a year later, they're in a different job and you're like, that's why. But that communication has to be there and it has to be intentional with good intentions. You know, they have to understand that, that that's where that's coming from. Yeah. And, and this is a tangent that I don't want to spend time on, but I really feel like from a leadership standpoint, just in general, um, leaders don't have those Communic- uh, those conversations with with uh, their their teams, and so there's this disconnect between. Well, Jennifer never told me why why am I not ready for this promotion? Why am I yep. not? But I've never received any feedback to say otherwise. And everybody knows why I'm not ready, but nobody's told me, exactly. and no one said let's 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 put this plan together. Let's let's figure out how to get you here because and here you know, I the the best conversations that I've had. Um, when it, as it relates to like work and like from leadership and anybody in my life in general, it's just, here's what you need to work on. Here yeah. are things that you don't do well, because now yeah. you have my attention because um, I don't need warm and fuzzy. I just need a genuine sort of interest. Yeah. And, and, and if you've taken that interest in me, and you've thought enough of me to say, hey, let's let's work on some stuff. That means more to me than going than like being like, hey, great job. Keep up right. the good work, like some generic, right. you know. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we can do a whole nother performance management conversation some other time because 
That is a missing link when it comes to leadership, developing people. Mm -hmm. That is, and to me, that's, that's my job. Like that's what I'm supposed to be doing is developing people. Yes. Getting work done and all of that, but having those conversations so that at the end, when they get a performance review score, they're not shocked. That should not be the first time they hear that they need to work on stuff. It should right. be an ongoing conversation. So Absolutely. we can talk about that some other time. I love that. Yes, yes, yes. Um, and I'm, I'm, I'm building, I'm building some stuff around that too. So I, I'm going to, I'm going to lean on you to help me with that. So I do want to say something. You talked about the story within the story. Don't discount how valuable that also can be. I mean, storytelling is a huge part of communication. You know, if I go up in front of 250 people and I just say, developing your people is important. You have to do this. And here's, you know, the outcomes you're looking for. And here's like steps you can take and here's resources. That's one thing. I go up there and I tell a story about it and they start to understand it. They start to feel the picture. Now a story within a story is fun. You do sometimes have to like, be like, hold please. I will be coming back to the circle. I'm going to go here, but I'm going to come bring it back around. But uh, don't discount that because the storytelling is great. It's just, no, for sure. Focus and, and, you know, have a purpose. For sure. And she'll, and she'll get there and she'll get, and yeah. maybe, maybe one day I'll get there, but, <laughs> uh, but no, it, it's, it's, it's so important because again, um, that's, um, a, sort of a, a frequency that we all can sort of like relate to is like the story piece of it. We may not understand the technical piece. We may not understand, you know, all of the intricacies, but we know that that analogy that they made, and that's that, and that, and we got what we need, yep. right, from that presentation. Um, and maybe somebody else caught something else. So, so that kind of leads into part of the book is um, I, I talk about uh, not. I've I've read that it's uh, you haven't mastered sort of a concept unless you can sort of explain it to like a six year old. Yeah. Um, comprehension is one thing. Um, but being able to articulate what you know is completely different. Talk about um, sort of how you view that concept and like, how do you, you talked about it earlier um, about sort of hearing these different words in your head and trying to make sure that you're making it plain for, for the audience. Like, tell me the importance of that and how you've sort of seen that go over really well. Like, based on the words that you choose? So one of the first examples I saw of this in a negative way is companies sometimes tend to promote people into a role if they're good at that role. So they might promote them to the next level, but that doesn't mean that they're going to be good at that. Good salespeople don't necessarily make good sales trainers. Some do, but just because they're good at the job doesn't mean they can teach other people to replicate that. And I've seen that so much in my career that I think it just made me very aware of it. And I started to see how salespeople are successful and then how to translate into sales training. So, you know, having changed my career from sales to training about 10 years into sales and then training after that was really helpful for me. I still sort of pull from that sales background in conversations that I have. But when I look at how to make sure that it's clear what I'm saying. In today's hybrid world, there's a lot of more nuances, right? Um, If I'm delivering a training, I make sure that I have another screen up so I can still see faces of people in the room to start seeing like, you know, what are their facial reactions? Like, are they, am I seeing nodding? Am I seeing some, you know, Um, and some people aren't comfortable on camera. So then you have to start using things like the emojis and all of that, just to try to get people or chat or whatever um, to get people involved. But understanding, like taking things down to that level um, is sort of a training 101. Uh, there's, there's the concept and a lot of teachers will tell you the same thing. A lot of teachers are taught to train or teach to the middle of the class. Mm. And people that aren't not getting it, then maybe you come back to them while other kids are working on stuff. And then you can, you know, spend some time with them to help them kind of catch up. But then the kids that are like more advanced, like will you sometimes can just give them sort of stretch work in the classroom and be like, all right, if all this makes sense, then go ahead and take this to the next level and do this, this, and this. So a lot of teachers are taught to talk to that middle. Well, you also don't want to lose those 
those people that aren't catching it. And so the thing, same thing uh, relates to adults. There's a lot of things related to adult learning theory. And one of them is making sure that the concept is relevant and they understand why it's important to them personally. The difference between teaching kids and adults, kids, you just go, I need you to memorize these multiplication tools. And they're like, all right, I guess I have to repeat that back to you on Friday. Whereas adults, you teach, tell them that and they're just like, nope. <laughs> I have no reason to know that. So you have yeah. to explain the reasons why. So coming from that training background, like understanding sort of that, that those concepts of how you're communicating to somebody from whatever level they're at and reaching them at that point. And when yeah. you're training or talking to a big group of people, that's harder to do, right? So you're trying to make sure you're kind of hitting everybody. Um, but selecting your words carefully um, and intentionally is so important. So I never script anything. I might have some bullets. I might have an outline. If I'm having a tough conversation with somebody, I'll like put a couple points down, but I don't want to script it because then I might lose the impact of the words in that moment of what I'm trying to say. And you don't want to lose that. You don't want to lose those specific words. I will tell you my boss now has a fantastic vocabulary. And I will tell you, I've only worked for her a less than a year, so 11 months. I've had to look up words three times. I had to look at them up and I'm like, hold please. <laughs> what does that mean? And <laughs> it's just very, <clears throat> for me, I really enjoy that. I'm just like, Ooh, she's challenging me. Like an example, she said something in a meeting. She was like, that's giving me agita. And I was like, what? Like, is that like heart stuff? Like, is that angina? What is that? Yeah. She's like agita. And I was like, hold on. I'm going to look that up. And I never thought of this and it makes sense. It's the root word of agitated, right? And I was like, oh, that's so smart. Agitated. Yeah. Like, so, so words are so powerful in how you use them uh, that picking the right word in the right moment, there's, there's no better feeling for me than when I choose just the way, right way to communicate something. And I see that like, oh, Oprah, thank you for this. But that aha moment. Yeah. Yeah. So I talk about in the, in the book and we've talked about it, you know, it sales communication, it's all the same when you really try to figure it out. And, and just like, if you're trying to convey a particular uh, concept to a group, if I can't convey sort of that, that, idea or the solution to the group that I'm speaking to, I ain't selling them, right? There's, if, if I look back and say, oh, are you, you guys with me and they are not, then I got some work to do. And it's that, it's those check-ins uh, throughout, whether it's the look on their face, whether it's just asking for, you know, feedback and trying to make it plain and then sort of like you talked about, like drawing those lines, like helping people kind of see themselves sort of in the idea that you're trying to, you know, like you're trying to get them there and you're, but you can't pull them there. Exactly. They have to exactly. sort of walk themselves. You have to lead them there, but you, yep. but they have to walk, walk there themselves. Right. Exactly. Otherwise they will get resentful and that's not, you know, they, they sell themselves. People have to sell themselves. That's right. Like if somebody comes at me and is like, you need this, I'd be like, no, I definitely am not doing that. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. But if it's like, do you have this problem? I'm like, yeah, of course I do. Everybody has that problem. Well, yeah. have you thought about blah, 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 you know? And that Socratic selling method to me is super critical to that questioning. You know, mm -hmm. that helps people get there by asking those questions. I think, I think sales training over the years has done a disservice to salespeople is it in so many sales training programs that I know of that I've been through are manipulative, right? You ask certain questions and it's like, you're supposed to follow an exact path and it's supposed to be this, 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 and this. People aren't that predictable. And if you're doing that path, they're going to see right through you and go, um, that's not what I needed. That's not where I wanted to go. Or we can skip this step because I already know this and I don't need to go through that process. And it just, people will resent that. And so the communication side of the sales is about asking the right questions and then really addressing truly what they're saying, hearing what you, they're really saying. You know what it's like 
it's like when people say, "Uh uh-huh, when you're not done talking. Oh, that bothers me. It's like, Uh you're not, you're not listening. (laughs) You're not listening. Yep. Like you're trying to get to whatever point you're trying to get to, but you're not, we're not really having a conversation, right? We're talking back and forth at one another. And that's not going to get us where, where we need to go. We're definitely rowing in different directions. That is one of the things that I've worked on consistently because I know I tend to do this. I'm already formulating my response when somebody's talking. And I've had to train myself not to do that because that isn't communicating. That is exactly what you just said. We're talking at each other and neither one's truly listening to each other. There's no active mm-hmm. listening going on. While I'm talking, you're thinking of your response while you're talking. That's, that's not a communication. That's not yeah. back and forth. That's not, that's not equitable, right? Yeah. That's, 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 that's having an end goal in mind and you kind of don't care. You just want to say what you want to say. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, obviously there's times where we don't want to, like, forget our point. Right. And so, but it's like, I don't know, jot something down, but like, don't interrupt me. Don't, don't, don't tell, you know, now if you're, now if you're the prospective client, go ahead and interrupt me. But (laughs) because if there's something important for you, but if you, you know, and, and, and other conversations, if we're truly trying to sort of just figure something out, it needs to be a collaborative sort sort of piece. And, um, you know, what I talk about in the book is, you know, Sheila and I, we had, when Zara got here, it was different. We, we had challenges that we had never had before. It's like this little person and we're just trying to figure things out. And, um, because I talk so much and it's so natural for me, um, you know, you could, if you feel like you've won an argument, then you've lost, right? Because you both, you, you know, and so I had to realize that my points were probably, uh, I felt like I articulated my points, but we didn't communicate. Yeah. And she didn't always feel her yeah. because, because I wasn't listening. And she didn't want to try to out talk me because that's just, that's tough to do. And it's First, again, say, she, she can't, it's not possible to out talk you. <laughs> <laughs> and it's not, it's not where we're trying to go. Right? right. And so, you know, and I've, I've still got work to do, but I've really tried to learn, okay, what are we trying to do here? And how can I just make sure I'm listening and maybe the conversation takes a little longer than we intended, but we're getting to the point where, you know, where we're actually making progress. Right. And it's not like we just had this. Oh yeah. We talked about that. Yeah. But we didn't, we never came to some, you know, some resolution around it. So those things are important. Um, I think that's brilliant back. Like the, the impatience that we sometimes have to get, get it out and get it done. And it feels like, okay, cool, we're done. And it's, but it's not because it's going to keep coming up if it's not resolved. And I think that's so smart. People like you and I that do, we're natural talkers. We communicate. We're just constantly talking. Like we sometimes get that like impatience, like, I want to say this. Oh, I want to say, I want to say, I want to say it. And it feels like it's done and it's not. I just think that that's really a powerful thought that you just had there. Well, I've learned the hard way. Thank you. Uh, you you know, it, it's it's. Um, I was talking to a younger, a newer, younger salesperson, and I I want to uh, bring them out on some stuff and just you know help them along. We were having this conversation. I talked about um, there's this there's these stages right where we start to realize what we're probably going to hear from prospective clients. And, and like, okay, now nah, but I have these solutions, right? And then it's like, now I want to sort of zap these problems as they come out of the perspe- perspective client's mouth. It's like, oh yeah, we got something for that. Pew, pew. And it's like, that's how the, and I was like, you have to learn how to sort of jot these things out, let them continue to talk. 
and sort of, you know, sort of summarize and revisit those things at the end. But that's communication, right? Um, we may we may be trying to we may have a crucial conversation right now, and I really want to defend myself. Maybe I just need to jot some things down, hear your perspective, and maybe I won't even need the little things I jotted down once I actually hear how you felt, and I'm actually giving you, you know, I'm actually trying to sort of let it wish around in my head, right? And I'm not yeah. just looking to to respond. So it's a patience thing. It's a confidence thing, and I, and I, and you know, hopefully, it, we can start recognizing the things that we're doing wrong, so that we can try to just. It's it's not a it's not this formula. It's it's going to change based on who we're talking to, the time of day, uh, you know, the the particular situation. But we also we 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 need to ensure that we're open to understanding that these variables are going to happen, and there's no like silver bullet in, in a way to sort of like get your point across or 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 convey you know convey that message to to whomever your your audience is well and a lot of that is emotional intelligence too you know recognizing where you're at in the moment where somebody else is at in the moment what's going on around them so that you can adjust how you're communicating and I think that is probably what I learned a long time ago because of my dad is in order for our communication to get better, I couldn't train him to communicate differently. That wasn't going to work. I had to adapt what I was doing when I communicated with him. I apply that as often as I can. I mean, I used to have eight direct reports. Like I guess at our previous employer, I had 12 or 13 direct reports. Everybody's different and they want to communicate differently. So I have to think about where are they at emotionally? What's going on with them? What's going on in their personal life? Like where are they at in their setting? Like having a conversation like this through a video podcast versus sitting in a coffee shop versus um, sitting in a church hall versus, you know, a funeral service versus, you know, everywhere is different. So having that emotional intelligence of recognizing other people, people's circumstances where that's going on. I mean, that, that applies. So every, every conversation, every communication is different based on what yeah. you're trying to get across. Yes. Yes. Um, that is a great place to end. Um, Jennifer, thank you for your time, your wisdom. You know, we could, I mean, we always have a bunch to talk about on and off camera. Um, this has been really good. And yeah, and you did not disappoint. So thank you uh, for your time. The, the book is Angelic Eights, A Letter to Zara. Yes, yes. Um, Please, I encourage you all to check it out. It's lessons that that we all can learn, um, and some of them I, I'm a little further ahead, but all of them, you know, again, you don't ever perfect any of these things. So, on behalf of Jennifer, I am Baxter E. Hall. I just want everyone to know that um, you are all capable. You just need to ensure that you find your own frequency. So, um, until next time. Peace. Welcome into his brain. Welcome into his frequency. Enter at your own risk. Come be at peace with me. Thank you so much for watching uh, this video. If you haven't already, please hit the like button. Please subscribe, share, and also hit that notification button as well. Thank you so much. Financial literacy to authentic black history, this real rap.